Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this Bible study session. I want to welcome all of us to this walk of faith through the Bible, episode two. Last week, we promised to continue our study. Today, we shall be looking at the heroism of David, the man after the heart of God. And we'll begin this session with a prayer as I invite us to take some time to calm down our spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God our Father, we commend our lives into your hands as we journey in our study this afternoon of your word and seek for avenues to deepen our relationship with you. Grant us wisdom and knowledge to be able to follow the dynamics, to be able to follow the direction of your spirit through your word. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. David was a very important biblical character. A man who did great things for God. And indeed, he is referred to as the man after the heart of God. Why? It is our hope that this study will help to grow our faith as we study uh, David. Who was the young man David? David, the name, means well-beloved. He was Israel's most important king. As a boy, he was chosen by God to become king of Israel. But first, he spent a lot of his childhood years as the harp player for Saul, the first king of Israel. David was the eighth and youngest son of a humble peasant farmer, Jesse, an inhabitant of Bethlehem. David's great-grandparents were Ruth and Boaz, whom we read about in the book of Ruth. David was born in Bethlehem, the house of bread, like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Bible names David as a very important ancestor of Jesus. Nothing seems to be known about his mother. As a youth, David was an adventurous, handsome young man with lovely eyes. Confer 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 12, and verses 7, and chapter 17, verse 42. David tended his father's sheep on the highlands of Judah. Although he was small in stature, David had a bold and fearless spirit. He had various encounters with the wild beasts of the field in the course of his work as a young shepherd. He narrates how he once killed a lion and also a bear with his own hands when they attacked, beating them to death with his staff in open conflict, confer 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 and 35. There is no doubt that David was a teenager with the courage and positive attitudes of an adult. It was while David was tending to the flock of his father, Jesse, that the prophet Samuel was divinely inspired to pay an, an unexpected visit to the family of Jesse. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1 to 13. The prophet also invited the elders of Israel to the house of Jesse and offered a sacrificial meal. But the one who Samuel Descend to be king was not among the sons of Jesse presented to him. Jesse sent for David reluctantly because he was the youngest of his sons. But at David's arrival, the prophet immediately realized 
recognized David as the one whom God has chosen to succeed Samuel, who had departed from the precepts of the Lord and lost the leadership of Israel. Samuel thus anointed David, pouring oil on his head, even though the prophet Samuel had anointed, had anointed David as king, he did not become king for many years, but God was preparing him. After Samuel had anointed David, he went back to his work as a shepherd. But the Lord, but the Spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward, and the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. Beloved in Christ, in the story of David, we see that sometimes when God wants to lift you up from where you are to a higher level, he makes you to experience some other parts of life to make you a better person. God had anointed him king, but at that time, David was a shepherd boy. God could make a shepherd boy to become king. With God, all things are possible. Within that time, there was the war between the armies of Israel and the Philistines. Some, now, some time after David was anointed king, eventually, the armies of the Philistines and Israel were in battle in the valley of Ella in Bethlehem. David was still too young to be enlisted in the army of Israel that marched out against the might of the Philistine army led by a gigantic figure called Goliath who was a terror to the armies of Israel. When David was sent by his father to take some food provisions to his brothers Eliab Abinadab, Abinadab and Shammah, who were in the camp of the army of Israel in the battle, David heard the arrogant words that came out of the lips of Goliath. Goliath said, Why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourself and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then he will be your then we will be your servants. If not, if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. First Samuel chapter 17 verses 8, verses 8 to 10. These words cast fear and trembling over Saul and the entire army of Israel. But David was not perturbed. Rather, the words of Goliath roused his spirit for battle, yet he was just a mere young shepherd of his father's flock. David went to plead with Saul to allow him to lead the army of Israel in the battle against Goliath. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 32. But Saul was very reluctant. He said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, and he has been a man of war from his youth. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 33. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and smoothed him and delivered it out and delivered it out of his mouth. 
And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and killed him. Your servants have killed both lions and bears. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hands of this Philistine. First Samuel chapter 17 verses 34 to 37. Initially, Saul refused to grant his request, but when he heard the courageous words of this young lad, he said to him, David, go, and the Lord be with you. Beloved in Christ, each time I reflect on the words of Saul to David, I have a feeling that David felt this young man was just ambitious. Saul felt, Saul rather felt, this young man David was just being ambitious. Saul felt David was going to be humiliated and crushed. In fact, I think in my spirit that Saul made a mockery of David when he said, Go and may the Lord be with you. And indeed, the Lord was with David. David then went to battle against Goliath. He led this army to war. Saul initially equipped David for the battle against Goliath by giving him an armor of war and a sword. But David later rejected them because he had never used them before. He had never gone to war. He was only a youth. Rather, David took five, David took his staff in his hand and chose for himself five smooth stones of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag. He also took his sling with him. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 40. These stones, beloved in Christ, were always there in the brook. But note that no one took note of them. David moved into battle against Goliath, having picked up these five smooth stones. When Goliath saw the young man, David, he looked at him with disdain and said, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine accused David by his gods. He said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the earth and the beasts of the field. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 43. The height of Goliath, the champion of the Philistine, was six cubits and a span, approximately nine feet nine inches or 2.97 meters. He had a helmet of bronze on his head and he was armed with a coat of nails and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze, approximately 125 pounds. And he had grips of bronze upon his leg and javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. And the shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his spare head weighed 600 shekels of iron, approximately 15 pounds. We see that in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 4 to 7. Goliath was intimidating. The armies of Israel saw the giant and they lost their mind. And the king of Israel too was scared of Goliath. But David 
stood his ground. David saw that Goliath was a giant, but God was on the side of David. Although David was physically small and had only a staff, a sling, and four stones in his small bag, he put his confidence in God. Some boast of chariots and some boast of horses, but we boast in the name of the Lord our God. They will collapse and fall but we shall rise and stand upright. Psalm 20, verses 8 and 9. There was something bigger than Goliath. There was something greater than Goliath that was with David. God was on the side of David. David said to the Philistine giant, listen to this, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you down and cut off your head and I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistine this day to the birds of the air, to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves, not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and it will give you into our hand. First Samuel chapter 17, verses 45 to 47. When Goliath drew near to meet David, he ran quickly towards the battle line to meet him. David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his, head, his forehead, and it fell on his face to the ground. David had no sword, so he ran and stood over Goliath, drew out his sword from his sheet, and killed him, and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they all fled. First Samuel chapter 17 verses 48 to 51. Goliath was a giant. Goliath was all covered everywhere. And he appeared for battle. And David too appeared for battle. Just imagine this gigantic figure staring at David with scorn. And David stood his ground and looked at Goliath, and David did what little children would do. They would take their toy and swing it, and turn around and let go the stone. Just imagine the champion standing and laughing away, and the stone was traveling in the air, and the stone flew until it got to the forehead of the giant, and that was all he wrote. David killed the Philistine giant. Beloved in Christ, we have something to imitate in the faith of David. We have something to learn from his courage, from his faith, from his confidence. Goliath put his strength in his signs and in his armor, but David put his faith in God. What were the symbolism or what were the meaning of the five stones? Let's look at that closely for this study. The symbolism of the five stones. According to biblical numerology, the number five stands for grace and redemption. Therefore, the five smooth stones which David picked from the brook 
as he marched out against Goliath and his army were a foreshadowing of the grace of Christ's redemption. According to St. Paul's letter to the Colossians chapter 2 verses 13 to verses 15, Jesus made you alive together with him, having forgiven all our trespasses, wiping out the handwriting in ordinances which was against us. And he has taken it out of the way, nailing it to the cross, having stripped the principalities and the powers that he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Also, Paul says in Philippians chapter 2 from verses 9 to 11, God has highly exalted him, Jesus, and bestowed on him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, when that stone, which was a symbol, which was an image of Jesus, hit Goliath, he bowed down. Goliath bowed before the power of God, for the weapons of our warfare are not worldly, they are not carnal, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Confer first second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. The young man David slew the mighty Goliath and put the entire army of the Philistine to shame because the Lord was with him. Beloved in Christ, the mountains, the challenges, the obstacles were there. But David was not afraid of them. With faith, David moved the mountains in the person of Goliath. Yes, the mountain crumbled at his feet, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. Beloved in Christ, as we follow this study, what are the Goliaths in our lives? Apart from the Goliaths of the pandemic of COVID-19, what are the Goliaths? Like the young man David, today, we too are surrounded by so many Goliaths. The Goliaths of fear. The Goliaths of fear of failure, rejection, barrenness, sickness, financial bankruptcy, disappointments of every kind, lost love, separation, spiritual dryness, inordinate longings, the Goliaths of sin, the Goliaths of a disorganized home, the, the Goliaths of divided marriages, the, the Goliaths of stubborn children, stubborn, stubborn grandchildren, the Goliaths of difficult husbands, difficult wives, the Goliaths of poverty, the Goliaths of hunger, and so many others. Sometimes we are so weighed down that we tend to underestimate God. We magnify these Goliaths to be more than they really are. Yet in all this, God's watchful eyes are always over us. He is always there with us. When we are weighed down by uncertainties and difficulties, let us remember that God is there with us, for he is greater than all our troubles. Never underestimate God. Beloved in Christ, David
David did not have the looks of a soldier. Saul, the king, thought he was out of his mind going out against the Philistine giant. His brothers would also have thought he was completely out of his mind going out against Goliath. They, they all discouraged David. Instead of encouragement, all he got was discouragement. They thought all he had were merely lovely eyes. But deep within him, the Lord put a daring spirit of adventure and victory. David could see beyond his small stature. While pasturing the sheep of his father, Jesse, the Lord was preparing his hands for battle and his arms for war. Though everyone thought he was too small, the Lord made him the captain of the army of Israel. For men look at appearances, God looks at the heart. The Lord had decided to put, the, put down the greatest enemy of his people, Goliath. Though this Philistine champion cast fear and trembling over all Israel, and no one dared to go out against him in battle, David knew he could defeat him through God's mighty hand. One of the five stones which God inspired him to pick from the brook and his sling were all he needed. The stone hit on the forehead, hit Goliath on the forehead, and he came crashing to the ground. How are the mighty fallen? And the weapons of war perished. Second Samuel chapter 1, verse 27. Great and mighty is our God. The young man David was indeed smaller in stature compared to the intimidating and mesmerizing figure of the Philistine giant Goliath. Yet David was courageous. He looked beyond himself. He knew that he had a God who is almighty and simply unstoppable. Goliath was a mountain, but David conquered him. The victory of David over Goliath is the victory of all God's children throughout the world. As Christians in a modern world, we must never give up in our struggles against injustice, discrimination, inequality, and all the structures of sin around us. No matter how much these abnormalities increase, light will always triumph over darkness. Good will always triumph over evil. Beloved in Christ, let us be inspired as we reflect on the life of David, the man after the heart of God. Let us never be discouraged, for God will take care of everything that concerns us. Shall we bow our heads for a brief moment of reflection? Lord our God, there is no one like you. You are an unstoppable God. Impossible mean nothing to you. Though there be sorrow, though there be pain, in your great name, may victory, may success rise for your people. Victory in you we will always proclaim. You reign over all in majesty and grace. 
You are the hope and joy of the human race. Help us to stand firm in you, always knowing that you will be there for us. You will deliver us even when we walk through the valley and the shadow of darkness. Grant us the courage of David, the man after your heart. Grant us the faith of David. In spite of our challenges, may we be faithful to you always. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved in Christ, we want to thank you in a very special way for this brief time we've had together. I will leave you with some questions for our personal reflection. After this talk, let's get together around the family table and share what we have learned. We can always do better, but we also want us to think, to pray, to reflect over this session. I will have four questions for our deliberations. Number one will be, what lessons can we learn from the faith of David? Number two, why were the Israelites not able to conquer Goliath? Number three, why was David able to defeat the giant Goliath? And number four, what are the giants in our own lives? What are the giants? What are the Goliaths in our lives? Let's talk about it, pray about it, and reflect on it. Last, the first session of our program, the first session of our study, we said after two sessions, we shall be looking at your questions in the third episode. Next week, Tuesday, next week, Thursday, I will be treating your questions concerning our study of today. Put the questions down in the comment section and next week we shall look at those questions and try to respond to help us to have a very clear idea of your question if it's clear it's direct and if we take one or two from you that's so that others can participate we will look at the questions as many as we can attend to in our next session may the good lord continue to bless each and every one of us as we walk in faith through the bible i'm excited i'm looking forward to seeing you next week thursday at 2 p.m for episode three of our study next week i'm not gonna next week we are looking forward to the questions but after next week we'll pick up another bible character and look at them reflect on them and pray on them may the good lord bless and keep you and grant all your heart desires through Christ our Lord. Amen. I will conclude our session in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.